Well, good morning, brothers and sisters, and those that are coming in. And, you know, I really appreciate even the numbers I saw looking at yesterday, late, late into the night last night before I went to bed. I said, wow, we have more people watching and viewing than we have attending now. And that that's a good thing because that's going to grow on its own. We come now, and I, I pray for everybody here this morning, to another rather remarkable chapter. This is next to being the longest chapter in the Bible, and we all know 119, Psalm 119, is the longest chapter in the Bible, which is all about the Word of God. Well, here we find 89 verses, and do you know, <laughs> I laugh when I look at it all the time. Do you really know what they are all about? And it's the title is The Gifts of the Princess. You know, like my wife said, a monotonous chapter because it's repetition again and again. So hold on to your seats. I will do the best in my pronunciation as I can, brothers and sisters. And we're told exactly what each one of them gave. Now, if you don't think God knows your hearts and my hearts in all matters, then go back to Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts when they lied to the apostle and God slayed them, or, or Aaron's sons. I mean, so we're not kidding anybody. God, we spoke about that yesterday. Adam did. God being omni present and the you know this is all about the tabernacle brothers and sisters erected and the tents of israel and i want to close in my opening talk yesterday at the end again when she the lord was blessing and then adam forwarded us into the matthew 17 and we're to carry that blessing to the world here we find the Trinity in the Old Testament. That was in the closing. I don't know if I brought that up at all afterwards. But the Lord Jesus is the one who makes his face shine upon us. The Holy Spirit lifts us up in his countenance, is upon us, and gives us peace. This is the only way we can come to God and experience the peace of God. And I wanted to bring this into the opening of the read today. He is the one who makes these things really real in our hearts, you know, and, and it's God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Many churches do experience the blessing of God, and, and I'll leave that at that. Let me get my Bible. I took my big Bible, put it on my right this morning. I'm ready to go, and I hope you guys enjoy. Sometimes I got to get under the light here to to see where i am but i got the big print chapter seven book of numbers and bless you lord thank you for the light thank you for the technology the zoom room thank you that we can record our hearts and our our teachings here in mos and put them up there free of charge for anybody in the world to to glean something from the word of god and Father, we know the word doesn't return void. And it came to pass on that day that Moses had fully set up the tabernacle and anointed it, sanctified it, and all the instruments thereof, both the altar and all the vessels thereof, and had anointed them and sanctified them. Now, you got to understand, lots of vessels and one of the things that really struck me with the beginning of this today was the last book that Adam got to bring forth, the Nazarite vow. Here's the two different things. The last chapter was given to us by God. It was him speaking throughout the chapter. This chapter was a picture and written by Moses. And he's explaining everything on how this flows that's why uh, after i read it again i appreciated it i was even trying to practice on some of the words but the princes of israel heads of the house of the fathers 
who were the princes of the tribe and were over them that were numbered, they offered. Okay. And they brought their offering before the Lord. And understand that these wagons loaded. It says six covered wagons, 12 oxen, a wagon for two of the princes and for each one an ox. And they brought them before the tabernacle. Now, remember what Steve showed. We, we, and it, it's centered with the tribes north, south, east, and west. And in the middle, the preeminence was the cross. And we know who was on the cross. That's the only reason we gather, to give him the glory, to give the word of God time in our lives, to be anxious in nothing. And what do they do? What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to bring our offerings, our praise, daily before the Lord. You know, I, I really believe in my heart, we need to get up every day with the intention to be a servant of God, wherever he puts our feet. And, you know, and there's a lot of us that do put that into practice in a lot of our fellowships. Because let's face it, they rejected him, his own people. And today, the world rejects the gospel. So they brought their offerings and the Lord. Now here, this is one time. There's two times here in this read today that God's going to speak to Moses. Verse four, and the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, take it of them that they may be to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Thou shalt, and thou shalt give them unto the Levites to every man according to his service. So they're going to be used in the work. And they're to be supplied. This is what God is telling Moses here. When the princes, the heads of all these groups, come in with their offerings. And Moses, verse 6, took the wagons and the oxen and gave them to the Levites. The Levites were the ones that were taking care. The thousands of them. And, and, you know, when, when you really look at what was going on there, the leadership God put in place, it's all, it's all ordered by the Lord. And that's why we're subject to those that are in authority. You know, and we're to respect the, the, the men and even the women that teach the children and uh, the younger women. Every, there's a purpose for everything God gives. You don't. Not everybody's got to be an apostle. Not everybody's. God's the one, and he rewards everybody the same. And that reward is, is priceless. It's, it's eternal life. You can't buy it. It's free. And, and that's what really touches my heart the most about God. That as bad as we are, he still forgives us. And all we got to do is ask him. And, and, and sometimes people don't get intimate with God. They don't obey the word of God. And here's an illustration that even in the very beginning, they had to bring an offering to God. And, and that's, you know, I was thinking about that. I rode by a huge church. I couldn't count the cars. And I was part of that church before it got uh, to be part of God, and I question some of the things that go on in Christianity today, because we read this Bible every day, and Moses took the wagons, the oxen, he gave them to the Levites, two wagons, four oxen, he gave unto the sons of Gershon, according to their service, four wagons, eight oxen, he gave to Merari, according unto their service, and unto the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. But unto the sons of the Kohath, he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonging unto them was that that should bear upon their shoulders. And the prince, the princes offered for dedicating of the altar in the day 
that it was anointed, even the princes offered their offering before the altar. And you know, I, I'm going to change something in, in our church because of uh, what do you call the altar? It's where you look to to praise God. God's up there. He's omnipresent. It's just like when the enemy says, hey, those stinking angels, they're making us do this. They're making us do that. And they're actually there, people. So you got to believe all this. You can't get anywhere in God's kingdom without faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please our God. He wants us to believe the word of God and, and put action upon it. I, I have a lot to talk about with that, but I'll save it for another message. And the princes offered for dedicating of the altar in that day, and it was appointed after the princes offered their offering before the altar. And the Lord, again, second time, the only other time God's going to speak in this chapter to Moses. Thou shalt offer the offering and each prince on his day. They also divided them into days. You'll see that as we keep reading. You know, one day, one prince, another day, another prince for the dedicating of the altar. And he that offered his offering the first day was uh, Nashon, the son of Amadab, of the tribe of Judah. And his offering was one silver charger. The weight thereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels. After the, the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them were filled with fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering. You know, we learned all about this in the previous chapters. And that's, that's why a lot, there's going to be a lot of repetition throughout this. Verse 14, one spoon of 10 shekels of gold full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offering, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. So they had to be under a year old. This was the offering of Nashon, the son of Amadab. On the second, Nathaniel, Nathaniel, the son of Zuar, the prince of Issachar, did offer. It goes on to say, he offered for his first offering one silver charger, the weight where was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of the fine flour mingled with oil for meat offering. One spoon of gold of 10 shekels full of incense. You know, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Nathaniel, the son of Zuar. And on the third day, Eliab, the son of Helon, prince of the children of Zebulon, did offer. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels. After the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of the fl fine flour, mingled, in other words, mixed it with the grain, with oil for a meat offering. Meat is not like we think today, but meat is food in the Bible. And, and, you know, they ate the flour mingled with the oil. One uh, golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense. One young bullet, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering. One kid of the goats for a sin offering. And for a sacrifice of peace offering, they had to give two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs, again, of the first year. This was the offering of Eliab, the son of Helon. And on the fourth day, Eleazar, Eleazar, 
the son of Shedah, Shehor, and of the prince of the children of Reuben did offer. His offering was one silver charger, the weight of 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels. After the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour, again, mingled with oil for a meat offering. And, you know, we know it wasn't meat, it was grain. One golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullet, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was in the offering of Eleazar, the son of Shedor, Shedeor, I'm sorry again, on the fifth day, uh, Shalumiel, the son of Zerushadiah, or Shadadai, prince of the children of, uh, I can't pronounce it, Steve, Shimon, uh, Shimon, did offer, got it. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl, 70 shekels. After the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour, mingled again with oil for a meat offering. One golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace, offering two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year, this was the offering of uh, Shemelia, Shemiel, I'm sorry, the sound, the son of Zorishad died. What a pronunciation. <laughs> On the sixth day, Elisaph, the son of Duel, prince of the children of Gag, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight of 130 shekels, silver bowl, a silver bowl of 70 shekels. After the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them were full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering. In other words, the platter. One golden spoon, again, 10 shekels, full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of a peace offering, once again, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering, Elisaph, the son of uh, Duel. On the seventh day, Elisama, the son of Amy Hud, prince of the children of Ephraim, offered. And notice all these tribes are being represented. You know, it makes me think of all, all the different groups of believers throughout the world and, and their different ways and you know, some are really blessed, some are not as blessed, but they all gave. And and on the seventh day, Alasma, the son of Aminahad, prince of the children of Ephraim, offered. I just repeated that. Maybe God wants me to practice my reading. But his offering was one silver charger. The weight thereof was 130 shekels one several bowl of 70 shekels. After the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one goblet spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering. And for a sacrifice of peace offerings, Again, this is verse 53, two oxen, five rams, five 
he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Ilisamah, the son of Amahad. On the eighth day, offered Gamaliel, the son of Peda, Sor, prince of the children of Manasseh. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels over the shekel, the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering. One golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice, again, of a peace offering, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Gamaliel, the son of Padasur. On the ninth day, Abadan, the son of Gideonai, prince of the children of Benjamin, offered. His offering was a silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl, 70 shekels. After the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of the flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, and a lamb of the first year, one lamb of the first year, for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice, a peace offering, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Abedin, the son of Gideon. Gideonai. On the tenth day, Ahizir, the son of Amashadiah, or Amashadiah, uh, prince of the children of Dan, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl, 70 shekels. After the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for the meat offering, one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering. One kid of the goats for a sin offering. And for a sacrifice of peace offering, once again, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of a Heiser, the son of a Mishadai. On the 11th day, Pagiel, the son of Akron, prince of the children of Asher, offered. And here he goes, verse 73. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels. After the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour, mingled with oil for a meat offering. And again, on the golden spoon of 10 shekels was full of incense. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of the peace offering, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Pajil, the son of Akran. And on the 12th day, Ahi, uh, Ahira, the son of Enon, prince of of the children of Naphtali offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl, 70 shekels, of the sh shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine mingled with oil, fine flour, for a meat offering, one golden spoon again of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, 
And for that peace offering, again, a sacrifice of peace offering, they had to give up two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Ahira, the son of Enon. This was the dedication of the altar in the day when it was anointed by the princes, plural, of Israel. The 12 chargers of silver, the 12 silver bowls, the 12 spoons of gold, each charger of silver weighing 130 shekels, each bowl 70, all the silver vest vessels weighed 2,400 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. In other words, you know, it was on a platter. The golden spoons were full of incense weighing 10 shekels apiece and after the shekel of the sanctuary, all the golden spoons was 120 shekels. All the oxen for burnt offering were 12 bullocks, the rams 12, the lambs of the first year 12, with the meat offering, the kids of the goats for sin offering 12, and all the oxen for the sacrifice of the peace offering were 20 and four bullocks, the rams 60, that he the he goats 60, the lambs of the first year 60. This was the dedication of the altar. After that, it was anointed. And closing verse. You didn't think I'd get there today. Amen. And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him, they heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat that was upon the ark of the testimony from between what? The two cherubims. And he spoke unto him. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's, amen. Amen. Let's, let's go to a little comments here and there today let me move my stuff around because i had it all set up you know unfortunately it's a fortunate thing i'm doing this today because we're on a time frame because i got to get to the church and you know god god's really good because he's he's really teaching me to read it pronounce it you know i could get lazy and just put up somebody else but you know i'm not perfect but god is as I said earlier, the longest chapter in Numbers deals with a generous offering brought by the leaders of the tribes just after the tabernacle was set up. You know, and in one of my commentaries, it's got the picture, the same picture that Steve illustrated, how they, you know, and, and you, you look at the picture and you can understand what the way the tribes were all set up. It was like a cross. And, and you know, because God, God's, God's mercy is so darn good. Could you imagine? You got you, you to gotta offer those every time they set up the tabernacle. You'd never get out of fellowship, you know? I mean, it, but here, look at look what the com one commentary says. The gifts were identical. And that's how God sees us presented on 12 successive days, and yet in God's eyes, the gifts were from the individuals. And what we give is from the heart, presented for God's glory. He sees it, and he will reward it in his own time. And I got to tell you, I always sing that song. I walk around the house in his time. He makes everything beautiful in his time and those that wait upon the lord you know i i look at the 12 leaders each one of them was different each one was precious to god he received their gifts individually the gifts were practical and what were they used for 
for the service of the tabernacle. Wow. Remember, I go back to that, that tent pin. You know, that tent pin was the least of the most important, and yet it was important to God because it's like us. Every one of us has a function once we're born again for the kingdom of God. And, and if you noticed in the early on of the read, everybody but the Kohathites could use their carts for the work. But the sons of Kohath had to carry the tabernacle furniture on their shoulders. And you, you go backwards in previous chapters, chapter three and chapter four, and it's illustrated there. Although there are some burdens, others can help us bear. Because the New Testament says we're going to bear each one their own load. And Galatians chapter 6, 1 to 5, you know, we can go that later because I got a lot to talk about right now. David disobeyed. And, and you know, David man after God's own heart disobeyed this law and brought judgment from God upon them in Second uh, Samuel. And I was going to read out of it, but I can't go there today because of my time frame. Uh, but it was Second Samuel 6, verses 1 through 15. I mean, there was a lot of uh, long readings. There I mean, the whole chapter of Romans 16 should be read when you're trying to see what the spiritual comes out of. And I glanced at it this morning and I said, maybe I did this wrong, Lord. Maybe I should have did it in two parts. But you know what? When we do our part, God does his. Don't let anyone else study for you. Study yourself. And sisters... Don't just trust the guys you're around and everything else. You, you, you have the Holy Spirit. God uses women. I, th I think today more sisters have discernment than men. That's from my own opera, you know, observation. But David did disobey this law. He brought judgment from God. And, and the, the, the teaching here, is don't refuse the burdens. God will enable you to carry them. And that's that's a real deal, God enabling us to carry. And I'm gonna, I got my George Williams I'll do last. But let me go back to what I said earlier. Uh, I think I recorded some of the early stuff because I intentionally wanted to. But do you know who this man, Nashon, was in the beginning. Well, personally, it's the only time I've heard him really mentioned. I don't know him, but God knew him. Whoever he was, whatever he was, and you know how many people are like that in the world? That they, they do secretly unto God? You know? I always get a lot of secret things going on in MOS. Out of nowhere, God brings people through the door, and it blows me away. But God knew him, and God took note of the gifts that he brought. And that's, that's very important to me as a Christian, because I've been putting the Word of God into effect, and that's probably why I land on my feet. That's probably why I came back from the dead, it's because I do the word of God. I, I process it. Sometimes I'm stubborn, but in the end, God wins. It's whom you're really going to trust. I said that the other day on the head covering. It was right there in the Old Testament. They took the covering off the woman's head. It wasn't her hair. They didn't shave it. Do you find his offering interesting? Not really. They were all offering the same stuff. But see, you know, God knows every individual. The only one that, you know, when I read this and read it, it was like it was the same old, you know, you were, I'm 
repeating the same old story throughout these 12 princes. Almost sounds like they're, they're all doing the same shopping list. You know, they're, they're turning around and they're all getting the same animals to, to sacrifice at the altar and everything else. And each man came up. And no, I don't know what he did. None of them, really. I wasn't there. He did the same thing. He brought the identical offering. Each one came up with an identical offering. Couldn't the Bible just put a, and the, and the commentary was really good. It said, couldn't it just put a ditto there so we wouldn't have to read so much? Couldn't the Spirit of God have said simple that it was all the same? No. The Spirit of God, and, and remember this, this is something, the devil sneaks, he, he steals, he kills, he destroys, he takes us away from the things God wants us to do. He steals the Word of God out of our hearts, people, and you remember that, because it's with your heart you believe and you're saved, but yet it's with your heart, it's wickedly awful and deceitful, and it it goes contrary sometimes to God's word. And so many people fall into the traps of ungodly soul ties or watching things they shouldn't be watching or doing the things of the world that have nothing to do with winning souls and praying for the sick and, and supporting people that are... Uh, trying to stop abortion and everything else in the world today. Each man's listed by name, and as far as I know, this is all they ever did for the Lord. Remember, we're, we're reading the Old Testament. You know, when I'm dead and gone, nobody's going to remember us, only the people that were with us. And hopefully speaking, we lead a lot of people to the Lord so that we have eternity to fellowship. This whole long chapter is about these men and what they gave to the Lord. Strong point there. They were just men like you and I, sisters, you know. And even a spoonful of incense was recorded. A spoonful of incense. And, and don't think that every cry, every outcry to God, that that guardian angel that's with us, you know. And we don't have to suffer through the lamp, the reading of the, the reading of the book at the great white throne judgment is the opportunities that were missed by people, you know. I'm grateful. I, I don't care if I'm a street cleaner in the golden streets or whatever we see when we get there. I don't think it's going to be like that at all. I think we're going to be rejoicing and praising God, and we won't have enough time to catch up with everything we love. But basically, you know, very short commentaries this morning. Our Lord, now let's let's look at what Jesus said when he was on planet earth but when thou does your arms let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth matthew 6 3 i've preached matthew 6 till i want to cry because sheep are really not getting what that bible is saying you got to really turn your heart over to god to obey god and a great many people had better not let the right hand know what the left hand is doing because both hands are doing so little for the Lord. That's why when you examine yourself and you take the thoughts captive to the mind of Christ, you'll begin to understand how much grace God has given each one of us. They should be ashamed of their hands, both right and left. But I have news for you. Little as it is, the Lord records whatever you do for him. So roll up your sleeves, get busy, and be the ambassador that God has called you to be.
Every one of us reaches different people. Heck, this prayer group is made up of people from other places, go to other churches. It's not anything to get excited for. It's a place to be in fellowship, a reminder of who we're supposed to be serving when we delve into the Word of God. You know, sometimes you got to remember the Gospel of Luke tells us the Lord Jesus sat over the treasury one day. Was he noisy, do you think? Did he have any business there? He certainly did. It's a, he just happened to be the Lord of glory, and he is the Lord of your temple. Our body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we don't even take care of our bodies. You know, we all fall short. He watched how the people gave. The rich always gave rich gifts because they have an abundance. They were large gifts, and God noted that. Then he watched a widow. And I, I mentioned this, I think, last week, how the widow put in the two little coppers in comparison to the riches of that temple to the ordinance. Uh, uh, the ornaments and wealth of it all. She didn't add anything, but Jesus didn't think of it that way. She gave all she had. And Jesus, hers was the largest gift at all of all. And that was recorded in heaven. It's in the word of God. You may be sure of that. Jesus knows when we give from our heart to him. He knows when we serve him. He knows the intentions of our hearts. He knows how much you keep for yourself. You know, you're not supposed to be pious. Look at what I do. Talk of some people saying what they give is just between them and the Lord. You know, I've been given to the Lord the whole time I've been married. I don't even know how much I've given over the years because it's been what God commands everybody to do. But I'm not going to argue with people about it. You know, your heart is where your, your blessings evolve around with God. And God teaches us that way. And when I really delved in this this morning early, because, you know, this is a hard chapter to even read. And, and, and then give a, a, a spiritual thought pattern with it. But this would, turns out to be a remarkable chapter. You know, the 89 verses are long. And, 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 and some of the most monotonous things you'd ever read. Most people would stop reading the chapter after they got into it the third time, the fourth time. Why are you reading this? Maybe did you ever think you learn how to pronounce the words? Next time I do it, I'll, I'll Google some of the words I was stumbling with and get them into my heart. I pulled down a teaching off from a Baptist teacher the other day so I could learn a couple of other words that I mispronounce. I get tired of picking on me because I'm not an eloquent speaker. I think he opens the books and says, well, look here what the prince gave. And he takes note on all the gifts. No matter who you are, he's no respecter of people. And you know, the, my thought pattern here is we've all never done anything that's at, that hasn't not been recorded. It's the, the word of God says everything's being recorded in scripture. So get busy. Turn the cheek and start serving God the way he tells us to serve him in the word. My house will be called the house of prayer. I, I don't get upset if people don't come here for prayer or they don't, you know, I, I just really don't get that crazy with it anymore. But I, I tell you one thing about me as a brother in the Lord, forget titles and everything else. When I see people manifest and it's not them speaking, I pray more for them in the secret place. And, and for people that say we're in deliverance, somewhere along the line you get cleaned up. 
because I haven't had anything taking me over. You know, a couple of times over the years, people prayed with me because in my heart, I want it out of me. Anything that's wrong has got to leave. Just because a person gets mad, Jesus got mad. You're, you're allowed to have a righteous anger. You're allowed to understand that a lot of stuff that goes on in a lot of ministries is bogus. If you read your Bibles, you'll learn that, you know? And, it, and it, it says we ought to talk more freely about these things because they are important. Why? Because we get rewarded for coming into obedience to God's word. And, you know, my Thomas Nelson, I think there was Steve would know, because I'm not looking at it today. I didn't use it because it wasn't there for me. But I want to I want to go. I told you guys yesterday I was going to go into the. Uh, the George Williams, and I actually highlighted something here because George William commentary, he rolled six and seven together. So here I'm going to give you everything that was in George Williams this morning because this is the spiritual of what we just read and how it can apply for us in our lives. In the midst of this life of separation, remember? Think about the ending. We're to bless people from yesterday. We're to make a vow to God and live the vow. You know? And I even went deeper in as when, when Adam was teaching about why, because, because Paul had made a vow, and I think Paul had, you know, that thorn in the flesh got him at that point, and he shaved his head. And in the midst of the life of separation and dedication, separation was the whole chapter of six. That means you're totally giving your heart and your being over to God. Most Christians haven't done that. Most Christians are lukewarm. And then you turn around and you dedicate. And that's what they were doing in the tabernacle. They were bringing their offerings. Today, we present our body, our life, as servants of the Most High God. And that's why you suffer affliction and persecution, because his own didn't receive him. What do you think? Everybody's going to clap hands when you and I walk in and proclaim the kingdom of God? They laugh at us. There's a triple blessing here from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Verse 24, Jehovah the Father, the source of all blessing. Verse 25, Jehovah the Son, the channel of all blessing. Verse 26, Jehovah the Spirit, the imparter of all blessing. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my ways. Get it? It's all grace. Godly sorrow is grace. It comes by you diligently seeking God. And there's a lot of Christians that have a lot of hiccups because they're reading it and they're not abiding in it. There's a lot of good things in God's word to tune us up spiritually. The dedication gifts that we're given must follow and not precede separation. It pulled up uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 5. In both cases, the cleansing sacrifice. Listen to this. This was important because they had to do, the, 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 the atonement was being done with the animals. He says, in both cases, the cleansing sacrifice was needed to sanctify the gift. However sincere, self or wealth, surrender. One was in yesterday's read, 614, today 716. Otherwise, they must be rejected as were Cain's gifts. You got to go back and, and go back to Genesis and see why God was upset with Cain and why he wasn't with Abel, and it led to Abel being killed. 
the understanding of true love is back in chapter 4, 24 to 33, is repeated again today in verses 7 and 8. Outward service to Christ may need mechanical help, but the burdens of the inward uh but the burdens of the inward communion has to be born in our hearts. Just like today, I got up. I knew what I was facing here today. I went in and cut where that phone call came in saying I had to be at the church to put that Wi-Fi thermostat in. And, you know, I had to ask God to knock me out when he woke me up the first time last night. I said, Lord, I got to read this read, and then I got to get out of the house and get to the church. You know, God's always on time. I looked at my wife today. I was downstairs. I said, I got to go take a shower, wake up, and start studying. So it must be born. Our relationship begins with our heart, and we all know that. Believe in your heart. Confess with your lips. If you're not believing in your heart, you're not going to be able to say, Jesus Christ. You're not going to be a good witness. You're not going to ever really lead people to Christ if your heart's not in it. Do you ever meditate on a wise man or woman, because women's from men, win souls? I don't care if this is all I do the rest of my life is sit here and put stuff up on the internet right now so that maybe someone out there who's on the fence can get saved. The human historian will compress the offerings of these princes into one verse, for they were all some similar. But to God, they were precious, that they are minutely detailed and repeated throughout this chapter. A corresponding affection appears in the names and the actions that are recorded. And I went and I opened these this morning, brothers and sisters. It's called Due Diligence, Second Samuel, chapter 23. You got to read the whole chapter. Many times I say this to people, but people don't understand. When you read a whole chapter, there's always a blessing for the person that's reading. God's got something he wants to show us. And the other one they put in the commentary this morning was Romans 16. You don't need me to read that. You just open it up and read the chapter. Because, uh, Pastor, it's uh, the Old Testament, for me, it's been hard to understand it's some been of the words. It's too. But that's why you need to stop. Yeah. And, and let me finish. And I've been using Barbara, the dictionary. Barbara, let me finish. This is I'm me. sorry. Thank you, sister. You know, to the bottom end of this teaching today, out of the last commentary I'm going to read from, Christ loves all of us and so sees it, it to the countless millions through many centuries. And there's a real challenge. They didn't have 20 different Bibles over all these centuries. And God, God loved them from the first century church all the way until the last person that's getting saved. And you're going to see that. It ain't over until the Father says it's over. And we, this prayer group is praying for an extension. Otherwise, we all have a lot of people that are not going to heaven. You know, you got to keep the, 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 the fire burning here. And millions through many centuries shall read of them. Thus, little Benjamin and his gifts are given as much importance as the great Judah in the very beginning and his offerings. And finally, the last verse illustrates inspiration, the voice that issued from the flame of the burning bush. Amazing how, you know, 
I never grabbed it until I re read the commentary, but the commentary says that was issued from the last, the burning bush and from the flame of the mercy seat and from the glory, Revelation chapter one, verse 12, was the, was the voice that said, and I've been preaching this for a long time. Let me get my other Bible. Uh, where did I put it? Uh, did I mark it in this one? No, I think I went, I went this way, I think. Let me see. Uh, back up, back up. Yeah. 12, not uh, the, the 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, I have been, that's been one of my battle cries all the time, even in the prayer group. Just give God a chance to teach you and show you who he is. And, and speak Jesus, all of us. You know, even what Jason's been doing lately, he's been putting up those scriptures and sending them out. The word of God doesn't return void, you know? What I do here with all you guys, it's getting recorded, it's going up. I don't have to say nothing. God's word says it. Even with the repetitious reading today, what brings it to fruition at the end is some of the stuff I pulled out of commentaries this morning. And if you, you think you can go with just the word of God, like Barbara said, Barbara has a hard time, but she's also, people go to churches where they don't really go into these scriptures and explain it. Because you know what? You really got to go to God and seek God and sometimes go to different teachings. And, and, and uh, what did Pastor Worley say? Eat the meat and spit out the bones. And there's a lot of bones in commentary. You got to read them a few times and ask God to show you, you know, I, I always, the Bible teaches us as Christians to try the spirits. Well, yeah, you try the spirits by taking whatever a person says or taking your thoughts captive to the mind of Christ. And I'm not being funny here. Huh? I'm being real this morning. And as as much as I can do, I can only do because of the grace of God. Here, I never went to college. Does it mean I'm not qualified to preach Jesus Christ crucified? And, and you know what? I, I put another one up last night where the demons were talking turkey to me. It's up there on the internet now, and people are going to listen to it. and. Let God deal with people. You know, if they don't want to repent and they don't want to start trusting and obeying God, you're not going to change them. You need to pray for them. You know, I so many people call me, guys. I, I just, I'm getting older now and I'm tired of preaching the same old story to people. Everybody said, I got to do my part every day. When I, when I went out with my grandchildren, my nieces and everything recently with my wife, I, I have to give back now. I, was, I had people laughing at me yesterday because how do you say no when your kids are taking you out to dinner and they're bringing all kinds of delectable, eatable pastries and everything else? It's, it's a once a year affair, you know, and you don't want to, how come you're not eating? You got to enjoy. When you go to a person's house, it says, eat what they put before you. That's, that's part of loving one another and having a good time. And, you know, I don't know what to tell people anymore. You know, because I have to, do, everything I preach, I have to do. Otherwise, I can't preach it. And that's how I'm going to close today. You know, because I really feel a lot of people are not doing 
what God tells us to do sometimes. There, there's areas I always tell everybody here, Charlie can do better. I'm not perfect. But you know what? I submit to prayer. I have people pray with me all the time. So it's not because I'm not asking for prayer and getting prayer. You know, and, and God, he really does bless you when you go about his work. And it's not always about money and stuff, people. Hey, you don't need money to win souls. You know, we even let uh, Justin back in this week. And, and you know what? I don't know if he's here today. I, I don't, I'm not looking at the board that way. I'm not looking to see who's here. There's eight of us here right now, you know, counting my wife. My wife was the first one that said amen after I did the, war, the warfare prayer. You know, it's, it's, there's no ego in doing this. It's just dedication to praying for people. And, and you know, I said that to you, Costas, yesterday. You know, you're going to get better if you stick to it. And if you heed instruction, you will begin to grow. You know, we're not here to hurt anybody. We're here to, to teach people. And if you want to play with demons, you better read and study War on the Saints. I don't care who you are. I don't care what church you go to, you know, because nothing will be impossible. But you've got to discipline your body. You've got to do what Christ says to do in the Word of God. That's why there's no real miracles going on on a regular diet. I think today, some of the younger brothers that are younger, I mean younger, because when I was younger, there was a lot more deliverance going on because I was tuning up with the Word of God every week. Now that I'm older, I'm struggling a little. You know, sometimes I get to the second or third day and I'm like, oh, I can't function. And, and that's because of age. And, you, and it doesn't stop me from fasting. I've had people, I can't fast. I, I'm diabetic. That's a lie. You can fast. And as long as you believe you can't, guess what? The enemy just put your light out. But anyway, God bless you all. Anybody else? Have anything to say you'll add to it in a moment and if you're not saved ask jesus to save you lower be humble and say i need you i need a savior god bless you all